uh, what do you what would you say would be the the true philosophy of a of a mountain person? Anyway, I mean, what is what do the mountain people believe in? What they they but they believe in honesty. They believe in tending their own business, and and they believe. You say like a mountain man grows a patch of corn. They believe they can do what they want to with that corn. Mm -hmm. It's none of nobody else's business. Uh-huh. And, and, and they, they, they believe in a good thing, Alan. They, mo most of them's religious, you know, a lot of them in their own way. Mm -hmm. And they bother nobody, and they don't like to be bothered. Mm-hmm. No much of nobody's business. Without one thing that people have always done it living in all the parts of the country with their corn is to make liquor which they it's the best way to make a profit out of your crop right yeah, and they, they had the whiskey rebellion the first war we ever fought in this country and it was a whiskey rebellion the folks of ten world war one no pennsylvania the pennsylvania had, had a whiskey rebellion they marched against washington don't you remember that was that the civil war no before that way before that <laughs> anyway uh, you all make whiskey back up in here at times, do you? Well, we have been known to make a few gallons. Uh huh. Last time was 1960. What'd you say? 1960. What do you mean by that, 1960? That's the last you made. Last liquor I made. Uh huh. Did you made a lot before that? Oh, I made a lot of before. The last time I made was 1982. Oh, let's wait a minute. Can we set that up a little bit? Or get it slide into it. How's it working for you? Good, good. We're working good. Tell me how you make how you make good whiskey. What's 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 what the in ingredients it? of good whiskey? What, what you put in to make it? Yeah. Well, how do you do it? Well, you take you take your put your barrels up. Set your barrels up. Put them in there. Mm -hmm. Well, you take cornmeal, whatever you want to make it out, and cook that cornmeal, put it in there and cook it, heat your water, boiling hot, and put it in there and cook it good. And let's sit overnight or the next day, day two, when trying to sour, and then go back and recook it again. And you got a sour mash. Mm -hmm. So, and you put your, put it up and put your sugar in, and put some oil in. And, then we're talking on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got some good lick. Well, now some of some some of this uh, moonshine is dangerous. It they got uh, what do they call it? Lead poison. Yeah. Fusel oil in it. Yeah, yeah they, 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 they run, run what to do, Alan. They run it through car radiators. Yeah, and they use that for a condenser. Take this old uh, this old sheet on. Got a sink in it. Uh huh. I make a pot out of it. And it Make steel out, you know. Mm -hmm. You got zinc in that zinc poison. Mm -hmm. I see. Then it comes out in your liquor. Right. The wrong kind of sorting. You can sort her still with the wrong kind of sorting, and you still get lead poison. I see. It needs to be sorted with silver sorter, mm -hmm. copper steel. Right. And it needs a worm. You, ne you need a worm. A yeah. Some things you condense your bread in the water. Well, a car radiator, you can't boil that lead out of it. Take mm -hmm. 10 or 12 coils. Mm -hmm. okay go around and around, you know. What you do, just cut your tree open, take your, make your long pipe, mm -hmm. about however big you want, an inch and a half or two inches, and ten lock it sort of together. It's hard to sew on a slip apart. Then start down the bottom, just roll it up out of a right. tree, mm -hmm. where you cut it off. When you get done, you just lift it over, you have to put it full of sand over, or the bus. Pack it full of dry sand, and crawl around that stump where you cut the tree off. You just go around and around when you come out the top with it, and you slip it over and shake your sand and pour it down. Uh -huh. Well, now, how do you tell whether your whiskey is good or not? The, 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 how do you tell a real good moonshine from a from a pretty good moonshine? Well, I can taste it, I would tell. Uh -huh. Yeah, you most of the time smell of it. Uh -huh. a, a lot of your liquor is the way you prove it. Uh -huh. They're secret. I can tell, I can tell what the taste of it is smelling like. Yeah, they're secret to proof in liquor. Could you describe the taste of good whiskey? Huh? It, you can feel it from here to here. Good whiskey. It, a warm feeling. Mm -hmm. 
one drink, you don't have to go back every 10 minutes and take a drink. One drink will do you three hours. Mm -hmm. Good luck. I want it cash. Yeah. Unless you want to get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. Right. Well, you know, I learned something when I went to lived in England for a long while. I found out that over in England, the, the, the working class of a man stayed drunk the whole time, all of his life. He took a couple of drinks, it's cold, you know, go out in the field and had a couple of drinks, then he had a couple of drinks at lunch and a couple of drinks in the middle of the afternoon. He's always just a little warm with that liquor. And the drink cider down in the south and scotch whiskey up in the north, but they're all drunk that way. It's the only way they could live in the Smoky in that cold place. They was? Yeah, and that's, that's why you're talking about that warm feeling that's that yeah. been traditional in our, in our whole ancestry. But tell me, you used to be quite a drinker, didn't you? Uh, I was an alcoholic, Alan, one of the world's worst alcoholic. We're saying that, um, I was asking you that why, why women drank less than men, but you're saying they, they drank as much, maybe. Well, they, I'd say some of the mountain women, they didn't get out and cavort around like men. Mm -hmm. But hell, they, they drank about as much liquor as men. I, I mean, you know, the old time mountain women. Uh -huh. But they, they, they worked it off. See, they done... A lot of people don't know it, but the women, the women done more work than men. Is that so? Yeah, that, that housework, man, is something else. And when, when a mountain woman put on... Yeah, they've got to see what's going on. They should fix their car. When a mountain woman what? When a mountain woman... When you eat breakfast, you put on dinner right then. Uh -huh. And that dinner simmered all day long. Uh -huh. When she washed her dinner dishes, she put on supper. Uh -huh. She cooked all day on, on a hearth or on an old cook wood stove, you know. Uh -huh. And a pot of pinto beans now that they're cooking an hour, it, 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 they used to cook them all day long, didn't they, Karen? Uh -huh. With a hunk of meat in them. Uh -huh. uh, and chimney? And had a piece of metal run across the chimney, you mm -hmm. know, some kind, or mm -hmm. some hole. That had a warrant on it, had hooks on it. Mm -hmm. Just hook, hook that pot on there, and just keep a little pouring on it, cook them slow. I guess uh, the liquor helped them with their different, the, with, with, with uh, pains and aches, too, didn't it? It helped them with pains and aches, and it helped them bear the tough living they had to have. Mm -hmm. A little, little shot of whiskey, you know. And, th and then it's actually good for you, Alan. I mean, if, if you can drink it. I, I can't have it. I know that. But if... You take a couple of drinks of liquor a day, especially when you get a certain age, it keeps your blood down. It's a good medicine. Mm -hmm. A doctor don't want you to drink it on account they can't sell you the medicine if you drink it. <laughs> I'm just going to put it the way it is. Drink liquor right, taking two or three drinks a day, it wouldn't hurt. Mm -hmm. It ain't what goes in you, it hurts you, it's what comes out. Right, right. You know what? Well, you said that how much liquor would a would an old time mountain lady uh, c consume in a day? I'd say a pint. Mm -hmm. The average woman, wouldn't you, Cass? I guess so. About, about a pint. Mm -hmm. I'd have been what four or five good drinks a day in a pint. Mm -hmm. See, they took drinks; they didn't play with it. Mm -hmm. Well, you tell me about Wayne. They didn't have no pint bottles like Ann Hardy. All right. Most most of the time, they nobody never knew if they drunk it. Mm -hmm. See, they'd keep it sitting, and when, when they got to filling down, they'd just go in and take them a drink. Nobody never noticed. Uh -huh. Well, now, when you say you couldn't handle it, what do you mean? Tell, tell me about that. Well, I'm an alcoholic, Alan. Yeah, but what, what, how much did you drink when... When I drank half a gallon a day for 15 years. Well, that'd kill a horse to drink a half a gallon well, a day. Well, I was a pretty good horse, and it liked to gut me. Come a little get you, did Come a little get me. But I ain't drank any now in nine and a half years, not even my beer. Be nine and a half years the seventh. When's the seventh? The day's the fourth. Mm -hmm. Three more days will make nine year and a half mark. I take it a day at a time. What do you mean by that? Well, I, I can tell you I ain't going to drink none today, but I don't know about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, you see. Mm -hmm. That's dangerous for an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. So I just, I'll just i tell you that I ain't going to drink none today and tonight. But tomorrow I'll have to wait and tell you. What am I going to do that day? <laughs>